Hey everyone, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today is uh, day two of me assembling these trainer boards. And this one here is based on DC circuit theory. So we're gonna mix a little bit of AC and DC on this one because obviously all medical devices have AC and DC components. And uh, let me take a little walkthrough of where I'm at so far. And I'm still trying to figure out where we're gonna go from here because I'm thinking about adding a whole bunch of uh, troubleshooting type of bugs and stuff on the other side of the board. Let's go ahead and take a look and see what I got. Okay guys, so, so far I have, my, my power is gonna come into here. I was gonna put in a standard um, IEC. So right here's my NEMA plug. And right here is the female IEC. And I was gonna put a male IEC in, but that just wouldn't work well enough. Um, the best thing I could do is put in um, like a pigtail of a female IEC. And I don't know if I have one. So I might make this a hardwired board, which means the end of the cord right here is gonna get cut off and it's going to go through the board and secure it on both sides. That way there, it's got some strain relief for yank. First thing that the cord always goes through is gonna be fuses because it's got to go through fuses and I've got it going through multiple different fuses. That way there, we can actually bug it in different ways. Um, obviously, I have an e-stop, not necessary because uh, I think I have enough other redundancy. However, what this does do is this simulates how many medical devices out there have an e-stop and people, they see it, it's right there. And, and even though there's no power throughout the whole device, they're like, what the hell, why don't I have power? And how many times have people avoided the e-stop when all you gotta do is twist it? So I added it on there purposely because I want people to understand if you don't have power to the rest of the system, keep it simple, right? Go back to the beginning. So it goes, power comes in, we got neutral and hot that are gonna be fused. Actually, that's the opposite. Uh, well, right here is neutral. So this line right here, it's gonna go down through, it's gonna attach to this fuse. This one right here is hot. You can see that I have these running in parallel. So all these here are fused. Uh, I don't know what the fuses are. I'll have to open them up and look at them. And then each one right here is gonna be one of my outputs to each of my power supplies. Like this right here is an external power supply. It's got the IEC there and it's gonna be wired in right here. And the cool thing is, is I can actually open these up and I can put in faulty fuses and stuff and I can simulate bugs. However, there's some other stuff that people should be aware of. This guy right here, external DC power supply, it plugs in right here and it supposedly is gonna do something. However, there's no power because this guy is already defective. But I want people to know how to troubleshoot this power supply effectively. You're gonna have your IEC here. You've got your ratings. I have it all facing the, the, the person that's gonna be troubleshooting. And then right here is gonna be their DC jack for the equipment. This one is going to nothing. It's just in the board. However, you have to troubleshoot. You have to figure out what's going on with it, right? So uh, they're gonna check the power right here. They're probably gonna have power, maybe not, because maybe I'm gonna take out one of the fuses, right? So they're gonna have power here, but they're not gonna have output. This is actually a medical grade power supply that failed in real life. So this is gonna be an excellent one for people to troubleshoot because this is something that they will see 100%. I've got two uh, switch mode power supplies. One of them is a closed frame. One of them's an open frame. Both of them are excellent for troubleshooting because you have access to all your points right here, right here. Um, this one right here has got some rather small fuses in it. Hopefully it doesn't pop, but you have full access to your power in and your power out. Notice how I've got the cables going down here. So they will go down below and up here at the top, I'm gonna to have a series of switches that are gonna be unlabeled. And those switches are going to adjust what's gonna happen on this. It's going to turn stuff off. So the AC side's gonna be a trouble shot through this guy right here. You've got access to incoming power and outgoing power so you can check your fuses. And down here, this one here, it, the open frame has got access to fuses. It could pop fuses. now. Fuses, in my opinion, while they are a good bug to get you used to troubleshooting, it's a horrible thing because you're not just gonna change out a fuse. If this thing's popping fuses, that means it's probably got shorted semiconductors. So, but that's that's gonna be a good one because this one's got two really light fuses in it 
and they're probably going to pop. And so that one there is my, what, 24 volt power supply. Notice how I do have access to the legends. And this is a pretty realistic environment. So I'm going to ask the people, the students, what are the ratings on my power supply and what are the expected voltages? This right here is very purposeful because that is very similar to how they're mounted in uh, cabinets. So you have to get down in there and you have to look at them. So you know what voltage you should be seeing on the output. Both of these have a fan and you can see right here is the fan header. Why would I have a fan on there? Well, because I'm going to try to teach people to troubleshoot the most obvious. If the fan's spinning, it probably has voltage out, right? So why even troubleshoot any of this if you got a fan spinning, right? So I'm, I'm starting there. Here is actually a power and sense. You see in the legend right there, the pinout. Now this is actually used uh, to signal when there's a problem with the power supply or when there's a fault with, let's say the control board. So I might have to short these or I might have to put a positive voltage on it in order to turn the power supply on. We're gonna figure that one out. All right, so where do we go from here? I'm gonna have a 12 volt battery on here for sure. And I've got a float charger right here. This is a float charger. So I'm going to have this battery charging. So the cables are gonna go through the board and on the backside is gonna be this float charger. So nobody's gonna see that. Now, why would I have that on there? Well, because how many times have you guys had to troubleshoot a battery, right? And this one here is gonna be a good one because the, the terminals are right up here on the top. I'm gonna to have it so that you can disconnect the terminal to actually measure the battery voltage out of circuit, right? So you can disconnect one of them, you can measure your battery voltage, and then also you can measure the voltage coming into the battery with it connected and whether it's not connected. The reason you wanna do that is because if this battery is shorted internally, then this guy is gonna draw the power down on this buck converter or this float charger. So uh, that's something that you're gonna to wanna to test. So I'm gonna fasten this battery, I think maybe with a Velcro cradle. Um, haven't really completely figured it out. And then the second half of the board. You can see I've got a variety of switches right here. They're going to be doing things with the output voltage from here, turning stuff on, shutting stuff off. And I've got a variety of things. I haven't completely figured it out, I've got pulse width modulators. I've got voltage scalers for uh, motor control, speed controller. I've got several different types of motors that I can use for demo, um, including uh, like this one right here, is it got an encoder. And this one here is the driver, the pulse width modulated driver. I've got resistors. So basically, uh, since this is the DC side, I'm gonna teach people about how to use your multimeter using this board. So yes, I've got this is a 10 ohm resistor. And let's see, where are the other ones? Right here. Take a look at these. These are a what? A uh, half watt? No, that one there is like a 100 watt, 150 watt, um, 250 watt. That's a big bastard. But they're the same resistance, right? So you can't just... So this right here is going to be a whole nother lesson about there are different wattages to resistors. It doesn't change the resistance. It's still 10 ohms. But... There you go. It's gonna have the same voltage drop across it. But um, anyway, that's gonna be this whole second half of the board. I'm gonna work on that tomorrow. And uh, I've got relay stacks and stuff, so maybe I'll make these activate relays. I have so many components. I have drawers full of components that I can implement over here and just make it a fun time for people to troubleshoot stuff. I got a series of banana plugs and I'm thinking about making uh, the DC go through to the back and then from there, I'm going to create uh, female uh, banana plugs. And then we can use banana plugs to make a circuit over here. So I think that's how I'm going to do it. I think I'm going to put a female and male banana plug here, female and male up there. And then from there, they're going to make a circuit to make something happen over here, including pressing buttons or something like that. What do you think, guys? I have a little bit of everything so that people can troubleshoot. This is also going to function with my AC power board. So here is my AC circuit board. You can see I've got the loop right there. That is my incoming power. So they can we can troubleshoot both boards together by having, uh, I can induce power supply problems over here, which would be the facility, I have GFCIs. 
and I have um, isolated power. And those will induce different problems with these. And this is stuff that you're going to see in the field for real. Because what if your GFCI blows out? Which could happen. I mean, how many times have people tried to plug in um, medical devices over by sinks or something and the GFCI is blown out? I've seen it several times. Um, or the isolated power. They're going to be like, hey, why to ground to one of my legs, why do I have 60 volts? Hmm. Here's why you can troubleshoot it. We can troubleshoot it right here. So I've got ground, neutral, hot, or ground, 60 volts, and 60 volts if this board is connected to the isolated power. So depending on which one you plug it into, you're going to get different results. And that's going to be the cool thing about this. So anyway, guys, I've been planning this out for a long time. I've been working on it, and uh, I'm going to work probably late through tonight and, you know, probably tomorrow and then on Monday. I'm going to be going with the College of Biomedical Equipment Technology, and I'm going to be teaching a course out there. I've got one day, one day to do it. I, I wish I had more time, but that's life, right? So I've got one day to do it, and uh, that's because on Tuesday, I have to fly out to Minnesota because I'm going up there to Minneapolis and uh, Duluth for the Central Northern uh, Biomed Society. It's going to be a great event, man. I'm very jazzed about that one. So I'm really working hard to get this done so I can move on to the next thing and uh, press on with my week, man. It's going to be a very busy week. You can see I'm working throughout my weekend. It's going to be good. See you guys.